loaded it on author stream and they could have it on YouTube anyway. I tried to supply this recording to several people on Facebook that want to hear it and there's it's on YouTube too. Thank God this morning I'm preaching on the consummation. This is the second sermon I preached last week on the first three parts. I have another three parts to it and I may wind it up next Sunday with three parts or may skip a few Sundays and finish it up. I don't want to bore you to death but I don't think you're getting bored with the Word of God by any means. The Word of God is good. Daniel 9 and 25 Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks the street shall be built again and the wall even in troublesome times. And after three score and two weeks shall the Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince shall come and shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood. And unto the end of the war of desolations are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations that he shall make it desolate even until the consummation. And that determined shall be poured out upon the desolate. The reason I read these scriptures is because this is a portion of scriptures that concerns the end times, the last days. And the consummation is the point I want to highlight because it will say that there will be one week and in the middle of that week there will be a, an abomination of desolation. But at the end of that week, it will be a consummation which means a completion of our salvation when we go to heaven. And what a wonderful time that's going to be. And I know it's a little bit difficult to understand, but I'm trying to open up this idea of the consummation to you, that you'll realize that we need to hold on to the Lord. Through our darkest days, our darkest trials, and many of us have been through those dark trials and found out that the Lord is gracious in our dark times and he's good to us and his grace is sufficient and I just want you to realize this morning that the Lord's grace is sufficient I know he's carried me through 20 years of paralysis and the reason I've had this goal to go to heaven in my mind is because of that same grace and that grace has touched many of you so I go to the fourth section. Last week we went through three sections. This is the fourth section called the redeemed of the Lord. This is an exciting section. In Isaiah 62 and 3, Thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the, in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. Thou shalt no more be turned forsake, termed forsaken Neither shall thy land any more be termed desolate, but thou shalt be called Hephzibah, and thy land Beulah, for the Lord delighteth in thee, and thy land shall be married. For as a young man marrieth a virgin, so shall thy sons marry thee. And as the bridegroom rejoiceth over the bride, so shall thy God rejoice over thee. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence and give him no rest, till he establish and until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. The Lord has sworn by his right hand and by the arm of his strength. Surely I will no more give thy corn to be meat for thine enemies, 
and the sons of the stranger shall not drink thy wine for the which thou hast labored but they shall they that have gathered shall eat it and praise the lord and they that have brought it together shall drink it in the courts of my holiness go through go through the gates prepare ye the way of the people cast up cast up the highway gather out I've got a little emblem that come up here i gotta cancel out it's in the way of me reading i don't know why the computer started that anyway go through go through the gates prepare ye the way of the people cast up cast up the highway gather out the stones lift up the standard for the people behold the lord hath proclaimed unto the end of the world say ye to the daughter of zion behold thy salvation cometh behold his reward is with him and his work before him and they shall call them the holy people the redeemed of the lord and thou shalt be called sought out a city not forsaken now we know about jerusalem today and jerusalem is a burdensome stone in other words it's a burden to the world how many times have we heard of them trying to make peace with jerusalem between the palestinians and the israelis and it's not happened yet has it and the whole world sometimes seems like it's fixing to go to war in the middle east and there's a lot of trouble but this scripture has given us hope in the middle of it all and it gives us hope because he said when they thought it was forsaken and the land desolate then he said it'll be called Hephzibah and thy land Beulah which means the Lord delighteth in thee and thy land shall be married I know many of you know about World War II I don't remember World War II because I wasn't alive then but many of you were young then and and uh happened to know that that was a terrible war and israel a lot of the jews were in germany and got persecuted and got put in uh, death camps died about six million jews and some of them when they finally got a place to go uh, england had set up for them to have the land known as israel today they had gifted it to them with the approval of the united nations and they became a country in one day they became a country now they still being a burden today there's a lot of things that go in to support israel and to defend it from america but there's coming a day that it's going to be delighted in by the lord and he's going to protect it and it shall be married and listen what the lord says about it as the bridegroom rejoiceth over the bride so shall thy god rejoice over thee and you may say well what's that got to do with me i'm not a jew but you know here's the statement in romans 2 29 but he is a jew which is one inwardly and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter whose praise is not of men but of god paul was writing to the romans the romans were gentiles but he said you can become jewish in your spirit and in the eyes of god and he's going to rejoice over you just like a bridegroom rejoices over his bride now, I don't know, maybe it's hard for you to think of this, but it's hard for me to understand how in the world God can rejoice over me like a bride and him as a bridegroom, but knowing the fact that Jesus paid it all on the cross of Calvary, and God so loved this world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life teaches me that God loves people but he wants us to come into salvation 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. And that's what Paul was saying. You may not be a Jew. You may not can come in under the old Mosaic law. But thank God for Jesus who resurrects us from the hope of lost, no hopeless, hopelessness and no hope at all to give us hope. Give us joy and to think that we can rejoice in the Lord and he rejoices over us as a bridegroom does his bride. God said it in his word in Hebrews. He said, if he spared not his own son, how shall he freely give us all things? And I just want us to realize there comes an end to all this trouble. And in that end, if we're holding on to God, if we're living in the name of Jesus Christ, if we love his appearing, it's going to be like Paul said in 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter. I've fought a good fight. I've come to the end of my journey. I've kept the faith. Henceforth has laid up for me a crown of righteousness. And not for me only, but all those who love the Lord and look for his appearing. Will he appear the second time under righteousness? What a thought that I can be loved of the Lord so much that he gave his son and died for me. Isn't that wonderful to know? You know, when this thing winds up, the world is not going to say, well, what happened to the believers? They disappeared. No, Jesus is coming on the clouds in power and great glory. And all the earth shall mourn that don't know Jesus. But those that know Jesus are going to rejoice. And he's going to do it with power and great glory. He's not sneaking in and snatching us out like some fiction authors have told us. The Bible said, The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to be into the clouds to be with the Lord forevermore. What a sound of joy that's going to be. And I don't think people are just going to be whispering his name along going through the clouds. I think they're going to be shouting it to the heavens. Hallelujah, I'm on my way home. And what a homecoming that's going to be. That's why I preach on the consummation. Amen. Brother Johnny, will you sing a song for us? Yes, sir. There's a 